All right, so this is actually assignment 5.2. So 5.2. All right, so here's what you need to know to do 5.2. Y equals MX plus B. We call this standard form. Let me type that out very quickly. We call this standard form. S-T-A-N-D-A-R-D form. Okay, so y, and the y is the y value, you know, when you look at parentheses, x comma y in parentheses, the y value, this, you know, that's the y value, right? This is the y value, all right? What we're talking about is this. We're talking about the x comma y, this y is this y, Okay. And then we have M, which is slope. And one thing about slope is a lot of times slope is a fraction. So I'm going to put it over one for right now. But a lot of times slope is a fraction. So when you see slope, you're going to see it in a fraction form. If you don't see a fraction, then it means that um, there's a one under it. So let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we have five... Five over one. All right. So if our fraction is five over one, sometimes you're just going to see the number five. So if I were writing this out, I would say y equals five x plus let's say four. All right. So y is the y value. X is the x value. All right. That's the x. That's the x value. That's the y value. Five is really Really, dilly, five is actually a fraction. So there's a, let's say there's a one under there. There is a number one under there. So if all you see is five X minus one, then there's a one under the five. All right, so my handwriting's a little janky, but that's a one, okay? All right, so here's the deal. Y equals MX plus B. Y is the Y value. M is the slope, and we just talked about the slope. X is the X value, and B is the Y intercept. So what is the Y intercept? The Y intercept is where something crosses the Y axis. So I just drew the Y axis, and right here is the Y intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis. So when we talk about the y-intercept, that's what we're talking about. Okay, so this is 5.2. This is how we solve this. This says y equals negative 2x plus 3. That says y equals negative 2x plus 3, right? Well, what, it, what is it telling us to do? Find the slope, then use the color, use the key to color the provided picture. So I'm going to find the slope. So what's the slope here? The slope is the value right after the equal sign. So here, the slope is negative 2, right? So the slope here is negative 2. You see it? All right. And if I go by the key, the key says that negative 2 is red. So what I'm going to end up doing is finding anywhere that I see a negative 2 on here. Here's a negative 2. I'm going to color that red. All right? Uh, as a matter of fact, let me do this. Let me bring it down a little bit so you can see what I'm about to color. So I'm going to color here. I'm going to color right here red. That's negative 2. Here's a negative 2. I'm going to color that red. Negative 2. I'm going to color that red. Negative 2. I'm going to color that red. Negative 2. I'm coloring that red. Negative 2. I'm coloring that red. Oh, here's a negative 2. So everything that's a negative 2, I'm going to color it red. So that's how we're going to solve these problems, all right?
that's how we're going to solve the problem. So let's go back to the equations and let's find the slope. In this one, y equals 5 minus 3 fourth x. Okay, so normally the slope is right behind the equal sign, but in this case, the slope is here. So I should probably say that the slope always has the x behind it. The slope always has the x behind it. So in this case, y equals 5 minus 3, 4, x. So the slope is negative 3, 4. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to find negative 3, 4, and I'm going to color it green. So wherever I see negative 3, 4, I'll color it green. Uh, let's see, here's negative 3, 4, so I'm going to color that green. All right, here's negative 3, 4, I'm going to color that green. You see what I'm doing? Negative 3, 4, I'm going to color that green. Negative 3, 4, I'm going to color that green. Yes, that's what you're going to end up doing. That's how you're going to solve these problems. Okay? All right, so let's look at number 3. Number 3 says, here's the line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find points where it perfectly hits the up and down and the left and right arrow. I mean, lines. So this line here, this arrow, I'm going to look and find where it perfectly hits the up and downs. All right. And the places where it perfectly hits the up and downs, I'll put a point. Now here's a place where it perfectly hits. I'll put a point there. Is that loud, big enough for you to see? All right. All right. Where's another point where it perfectly hits? Right here? Okay. So I'll put a point there. Mm, yeah. Okay. Here's another point where it perfectly hits. All right. Now, here's the beautiful thing, because what I'm going to do now is find out the slope. Now that I've identified the points, right? Now that I've identified the points, what I'm going to do is, how do I get from this point to this point? Well, this is a positive slope, so I'm going to count up. So I'm going to count straight up. One, two, three, four. So on the top, it's going to be a four. And what's on the bottom? One, two, three, four. Let me make sure I did that right, okay? I want to make sure I did that right by trying it one more time. One, two, three, okay, and then one, two, three. Hmm. While I'm looking at this, I see that there is also another point here. So this is interesting because I ended up with three over three this time. Now, if you use your calculator and you divide 4 over 4 or 3 over 3, in both cases, you're going to get 1. <laughs> in both cases, you're going to get 1, which means that I went up 1 and I went over 1. All right, so my slope for this one, my slope for number 3, the slope is 1. Even though I made a mistake, and I didn't count it the same way, it let me know when I worked everything out that the slope here is 1. Let me make sure. I'm going to do one more check just to make sure I'm doing it right. Okay? So, watch this. Okay. I want to make sure I did that right, so I made it a little larger so I can see. And so here's a point here. Here's a point here, here's a point here, here's a point here, here's a point here. So, okay, so the slope for this one is 1 over 1, okay, which means, which means I go up 1, and I go to the right 1. So if I were to write that, the slope, or the M, is 1 
over 1. Now, I could also just say that the m is 1 because 1 divided by 1 is 1. So the m is 1. So whatever I see the 1, I'm going to use the pink. So where's my pink? I'm going to use this as pink. So this is all pink. Pink, pink, you stink. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I'm going to color that pink. Wherever I see the number 1, I'm going to color pink. Does that make sense to you? All right. Last thing. All right. So for number five, I see coordinates. You see the coordinates for number five? I just see coordinates. Here's one coordinate, and here's the other coordinate. And I want to color that purple, so maybe I should have used purple. All right. But three comma negative four and two negative four. So this is how we're going to solve this. You're going to use your handy dandy decimals. All right. And what you're going to do is pop in three comma negative four parentheses. And then you're going to hit label. See how it showed up down here? Good. And let's see three negative four and two negative four. All right. So the next one I want to do would be parentheses two comma negative four. And I'm going to. OK. All right. So look at this slope. This slope is interesting. This slope is really interesting because I could just draw this slope and it stays. It stays horizontal. It stays horizontal. So what do we call a horizontal slope? Well, this is a positive slope. It starts at the bottom and it goes up. This is a negative slope. It starts at the top and it goes down. If it's a flat line, if it's just a straight horizontal line, horizontal, flat, straight line, horizontal, it's called a zero slope. And if it goes straight up and down, straight up and down, we call that an undefined slope. So now that we know those things, I think we can figure out what colors to use. Okay, so as you see here, the line is straight. It's a straight line, so that's a zero slope. That's a zero slope. So when we put in those coordinates, the two comma negative four and the three comma negative four, we have a zero slope, right? Right, so now that we have our zero slope, we can just go back to our sheet of paper, our finding slope, and we can say for number five, the answer is purple because it's a zero slope. So wherever we see zero slope, and let's see, here's a zero, here's a zero. Uh, let's see if I see any other zeros. Oh, here's a zero. So there's a zero, here's a zero. Uh, no, actually that's not a zero, that's just a design. But I did see, here's a zero, here's a zero here, and here's a zero here, so I'll use the purple. And now the last thing we need to show you how to do is when you have these in a column, it's the same way as if you have them in parentheses. So negative one, three, it's just like three comma negative four. So what you could do, if you wanna make sure that you answer this correctly, you can just do this, put it in a parentheses. Yep, yep, just put in your parentheses. So you have your X, comma, and you have your Y, right? So just put in parentheses, 2, comma, 12, you know, over here, parentheses, 2, comma, 3. And you can say, okay, the X is 2, the Y is 3. And you can do the same thing and just go back to your decimals calculator. And in your decimals calculator, let's do this, 2, 12. All right, so we're going to come back to our decimals calculator. And you're going to do what I showed you how to do, right? You're going to type in parentheses 2, comma, 12. All right? Then you're going to hit label, and it'll show up. It'll show up on here. Let's see. Where did it show up? You can move this around just by grabbing it. There's your 212. All right? 
So here's our y axis, here's our x axis. Here's that point. Now you can go back in uh, 1, 9. Let's go with 1, 9. Parentheses 1, comma, 9. That's a 0. 1, comma, 9. Then hit label. Here we go. Oh, you see how this line would probably go right through here. Let me put in another point. 0, 6. So next line is 0, comma, 6. Hmm. So, ooh, now here's interesting. The y-intercept is right here. This is the y-intercept. So this is how we can figure out the, the slope, all right? This is how we can figure out the slope. Since we have our points, from here to here and from here to here should be the same space. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. So that my m is going to have a 3 on the top. And I'm moving from here over 1. So my slope is 3 over 1. All right. Let's try it again. Let's make sure that we've, you know, we've uh, identified it correctly. So from this point, we go up 1, 2, 3 over 1. So we have 3 over 1. That's our slope. All right. Another way you can say 3 over 1, and you can just say 3. Because any time that a number on the top is divided by 1, whatever the number on top is, is the real number. So 3 divided by 1 is 3. You know, so we don't, we can write it this way. But in most cases, you're going to see it this way. In most cases, you're going to see it that way. That's the way it's going to look in most cases. All right. So since we said that our M equals 3, and 3 is orange, then what we're going to do is find all the threes. Here's a three. Here's another three. I'm just going to color all my threes orange. Is there another three? I'll look around and I'll find that. But that's how you're going to solve these problems. Okay? All right. Good luck.